Thanks for joining me here again at PreachingTheGospelThatSaves.com, the station that is dedicated to our Apostle Paul's My Gospel, the Gospel of the Grace of God, which you find only in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. You don't find it in John 3, 16. You don't find it in, in Isaiah 53. You don't find it in Genesis chapter 12. You don't find it in the book of Revelation. You don't find it from Hebrews to Revelation. You don't find it from Genesis to the cross. You don't find it in Acts chapter 1 to Acts chapter 8. You only find it in Paul's writings and it's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Paul declares in verse 1 that it's the gospel. In verse 2, it's how ye are saved. In verse 3, that Christ died for our sins. In verse 4, that he was buried and rose again on the third day. You trust that gospel, the gospel of your salvation that I just read to you. Ephesians 1.13 in whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Yes, you trusted by faith that Christ died for your sins. You are saved. You're not predestined to go to heaven. You're not predestined to go to hell. You're not making a choice of whether you're saved or to stay saved. You need to trust the death, burial, and resurrection as payment for your sin, and that's how you will escape a sinner's hell, and you will be seated in heavenly places. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, you'll have peace with God. Romans chapter 5, verse 1, you'll have all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, and you are complete in Christ, Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. So, here we are, name callers, ultra dispensate, you're an ultra dispensationalist. You're a, you hit people over the head with the grace 2 by 4 right? That's what happens when you just read whatever you want to read, on Google, right? Google's the final authority for these people, right? It's not God's perfectly preserved word, the 1769. It's Google on my phone. I'm going to Google it. And this guy's a top scholar, and he says this. So this guy on this website, at preaching the gospel that saves that cow, he's got to be wrong. Because this scholar, he's steeped in Israel's writings, and he knows He's got five PhDs, and, and he knows more than this guy who just reads his King James Bible and believes it. Yep, that's all you have to do. I have a final authority, and most people don't. I take a stand for the right doctrine, and most people don't. I take a stand against water baptism, and most people don't. I take a stand against tithing, and most people don't. I take a stand that you're not under the Old or New Testament, and most people don't. Why? Because I am a Bible believer, and I have God's perfect word without error, the 1769 King James Bible, in my hand to defend my stance. And so, you can be a baby and whine about it, or you can read, study, and learn the material. And if you don't know the material, and you're an elder, pastor, deacon, doctor, reverend, whatever you call yourself, you need to quit and find a new job until you learn the material. If you're not being called names, you're doing something wrong. So here we are, Ultra Dispensationalism, Name Callers, Part 4, The Death Baptism, No Water. This is the death knell to water baptism. Jesus said it in Luke chapter 12, verse 50. But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how am I straightened till it be accomplished? A baptism that Christ has not accomplished yet in Luke 12, 50. And in Romans chapter 6, verse 3, Paul gives us the definition of that baptism, which you will not find in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Romans 6, 3, Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. That's right. Baptized into his death. And you know what? Jesus didn't drown. That's what one pastor says, and he's right. 
There's no water in this baptism. And what's terrible about this verse, you can go to some so-called churches and get water baptized. Then they give you a t-shirt and it has this verse on the back. Right there is your first clue that you need to leave because they're teaching the Bible wrong and they're damning souls to hell. Wrong doctrine is what is most evil. Not homosexuality, not drugs, not fornication. The most evil thing is wrong doctrine. The devil is in the doctrine. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Romans 6, 4. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we sh also should walk in newness of life. So we're baptized into his death? Well, what is that? Galatians 2.20, I am crucified, dead with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Ephesians 4, 5, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, okay? It's only one baptism if you are in Paul's writings. But if you're taking Paul's writings and putting them in Matthew, how about Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, where there's three baptisms in one verse? There's the baptism of fire, there's the baptism of water, and there's the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I was talking to Bep Bethel Baptist Ben a few months ago, and we were talking about the word baptism and he says it always means water but then when I showed him that verse that there's three baptisms in one verse baptism of fire that has to do with water right and baptism of the Holy Ghost that has to do with water right and then there's the baptism of water he didn't know what to say but I know what he did he went back to his pastor who's teaching him wrong and told him that I was wrong but really, what he told them was the Bible was wrong. Not me. I'm just quoting what the Bible says. The Bible says that there are 12 baptisms in it and seven are dry. Hmm. Have you been taught that at your so-called place that calls itself a church because they don't call you the church? One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Is the one baptism water for the body of Christ? Or do you believe Pauline doctrine, rightly divided according to progressive revelation? Do you? Colossians 2.12 Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. 1 Corinthians 12.13 For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. So the Spirit baptizes us into the body. That is what the Holy Ghost is doing today. And that's all the Holy Ghost is doing. He's not speaking through you in tongues. He's not giving you the words to say when you preach or when you're in your darkest hour. Okay, He's not going to heal you tomorrow. He's not going to heal the big zit on the end of your nose. If you want that healed, I would say I would go to Benny Hinn. Okay, I wouldn't ask God to do that. Benny Hinn's doing all that kind of stuff. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been made all made to drink into one spirit. And again, this is a response to a person who asked me my a doctrinal question about repentance, which then led into the body of Christ being water baptized. But again, people miss the baptism that came after the Lord Jesus Christ was baptized. And that's the baptism that still had to be accomplished in Luke 12, 50. And that baptism was his death on the cross. Yes, that baptism is the baptism of death. Your water baptism tells me all you know is John. You ever notice Baptists call themselves Baptists after who? John the Baptist, right? Not Pauline doctrine. It's not Paul the Baptist, is it? No, it's John the Baptist. It's not James the Baptist, is it? No, it's John the Baptist. It's not Paul the Baptist? No, it's John the Baptist. 
again, it's not Pauline doctrine. This is dangerous. And Acts 18.25 gives us the definition of most people today, especially the Baptists. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. And being fervent in the Spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. But there was a baptism that came after the baptism of John that no one knows about. Instead, what do they do? They mix it, right? They take the things that God separated. They mix law and grace. They mix prophecy and mystery. And they mix the body of Christ with Israel. Thus, violating Romans 11, 6. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. This person needs to get things straight. Otherwise, they are an enemy of the gospel. And Romans eleven twenty eight gives us definition. Paul gives us definition when he's speaking to Israel. And concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. Because the gospel is not in John. The gospel is not according to water baptism. Most important, you need to understand the gospel of the grace of God, which is on the bottom of my email that I sent this person. There is no repentance in the gospel of the grace of God and no water baptism of John. Paul never mentions neither in his gospel. Right? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1-4. through 4. Paul declares it's the gospel in verse 1. Verse 2, it's how ye are saved. Verse 3, that Christ died for our sins. And verse 4, that he was buried and rose again on the third day. Where are the words repentance and where are the words water baptism? Not there. Acts 2.38, they're both there. So you know where this person is. He's not in the right doctrine. Now if he was Israel, he'd be perfect. 2 Corinthians 11.6 Again, when you teach and preach sound doctrine, you hit people over the head with the grace 2 by 4 And this is how you come across. 2 Corinthians 11.6 But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been throughly made manifest among you in all things. Again, there's that word throughly, not thoroughly. In 2 Corinthians 12.15 And I will verily gladly spend and be spent for you, though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. Right? 1 Corinthians 4.13 Being defamed, we entreat. We are made the, as the filth of the world and are the offscouring of all things unto this day. Yes, offscouring, that's me. Have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Yes. And that's how it is when you are Pauline. And as we continue, we are going to finish up with this person's response and the things that he throws at me as he finishes as we conclude these messages or this message of name callers ultra dispensationalists Thanks again for listening. Email me with any doctrinal questions from my website at preachingthegospelatsaves.com and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks again.